Okay, well, that was a little weird. I had a dream that we looped through the entire game again and everything had really weird stats. Feels like it's been forever, but actually it's only been about a week. Also, I've redone the, the equipment. These numbers are so boring! Uh, I don't know about that. It could have been a lot worse though. This could have taken two and a half years between uh, these items of content. That would have uh, really sucked. That would have been extremely unfortunate. It's a good thing that didn't happen. Mm. I guess we finally know her name now. Or part of it. Hooray? Well, whatever. We're back. We know who you are. That's not... That's not the issue. He would have a cravat on his avatar, wouldn't he? He would. Also, he would ask us questions. Wastelands will never forget. Bah, Apollo, that flaker. So yeah, Leah actually forcibly gets this one correct if you try and take the piss here. Anyway, don't joke around with people doing diagnostics. Protocol's important, okay? Also, uh, for the benefit of people who uh, actually are playing this for the first time after uh, two and a half years, it might be important to uh, recap some of this stuff. Yeah. 
Also, have you noticed how in the interim, Leah has gained the ability to form rudimentary sentences out of the very small vocabulary that she has? Pretty sure we had most of that vocabulary to begin with, though. No, I mean, we... It's not that she's learned new words, it's that she's learned to chain them together into rudimentary sentences, like, why wait? I mean, technically, yes, yeah, she has always had this ability, I think. But... She's been doing it at least as... At least as recently as... The... Uh, Grand Cascayo? Because she she was very insistent that Leah was going to wait for for Emily. Yeah, that might have been the beginning of something. I'm honestly dying to know how a lot of these conversations went. We know how they turned out, but like... Man, I want to see the entertainment executives' faces when Sergei makes that call. I want to hear the phone calls with legal. I, I want to read the ethicist research. Ah, who cares about that? We have a house. Our house even has treasure on the roof. It's like they know exactly what we want. say, this is all very nice, but I'm not entirely sure what the point of most of this house is. Ah, uh, we gotta have a house. Well, like, these things are based on copied people. It would be kind of weird to just have them disappearing and reappearing all the time like we've, like we've been doing in the main game. Honestly, the biggest question I have about Homestead is why did they choose this of all opportunity to finally innovate and put hinged doors in Crossworlds? Like, everywhere else that we go to has sliding doors, but these ones have hinges. It's like they've just figured out how to do it and they're really excited. Look, the technology of Crossworlds is extremely advanced. There is simply no way that they could have implemented doors with hinges prior to this. I wonder if you can make hinges out of instant matter. Also, I remind you that the terrain and major structures in Crossworlds are actually, like, physically there. Like, this this stuff had to be sculpted and built. So, uh, all told, when they say it took seven months, that's actually kind of astonishing. Yeah, that that is remarkably quickly for how much shit they had to actually do here.
by the way, don't get excited about the market here. There will uh, literally be no point in ever shopping here. I don't know why they bothered. Anyway, imagine being brought back as an AI after your death, and continuing to do your job. Forever. I feel like we're, we're raising questions at a rate slightly in, uh, in excess of what we can answer. I would like to think that wasn't their intention with the whole, like, or Radical Fish's intention. I should say, with bringing that up, but yeah, that's a little, uh, a little yikes. Probably treading in some ground they did not intend to. Alright, enough fucking around, let's start resolving plot threads. So Leia is, is extremely much more uh, excited to see fake Lucas than real Lucas, it would seem. I mean, yeah. Can you blame her? What has real Lucas even done that's that interesting? Have we known that Sergei's last name is Asimov? Uh, depends. It's unlocked in the codex at the very beginning of the game. It was the first piece of lore that I posted in the thread, and he brought it up while um, doing the meeting with the first scholars. But yeah, have you noticed how some characters in this game have incredibly on point last names? My, my personal favourite is Gotham Ranganathan, but uh, that's neither here nor there. I have to assume that at some point in this, in this interim, they've come up with a way to um, explain these things to Evotars without causing them to have an existential breakdown. sometimes that Emily and Lucas actually know each other, IRL. It comes up surprisingly never. In 
fact, outside of literally the very beginning of the game, where the only reason we get involved with First Scholars is because of Emily wanting to join her friend's guild, it never comes up at all. It's just... flavour. This game's kind of like that about flavour. I'm sorry, every single time I see Sergei's avatar, I'm just like... Like, I just can't. He's trying so, so too hard. It's extremely Sergei. He, he it is looks, the most Sergei possible direction they could have taken it. He looks like he's about to teleport away and start throwing bats at me. That's probably a purchasable cosmetic. Anyway, here's the pass to the rest of Rhombus Square, which we totally could have gotten at some point. We just didn't. It's not at all because that content isn't there and has just been made. Oh, I have a really bad feeling about this. I don't know, my raid siren's starting to go off. I don't know if that's related or not. Eh, we're overthinking this. Emily just has some totally super secret mystery news to share with us. So yeah, they talk about uh, what we're going to do with our time, but uh, haven't they been paying attention? There are six chests in Homestead. We know exactly what our first real order of business is. Anyway, yeah, here's where we are. We're just off Autumn's Rise. That gate was not there before, so uh, whatever they did probably involved a lot of blowing up rocks. They probably would have had to take a bit of the game down for maintenance. Like, literally, for maintenance. I am, frankly, very curious to see what that would have looked like. Seems like Autumn's Rise is a bad place to need to shut your game down and do maintenance on. Considering it's, like, the first major area. Yeah. They probably didn't have to shut down the whole area, but, uh, yeah. There probably would have been something conspicuous going on. And I don't know how, uh, conspicuous they really want to be about, uh, you know, all this. Anyway, Crosscode A New Home is pretty much Crosscode The Greatest Hits just bought back, dialed up, relived, re-experienced, and it gets immediately onto its bullshit. Like, this is to make sure that you're still on your game and you're still paying attention, and also that you remember that there's these little tiles that you can stand on that make the wave hookshot points appear. This, uh, could get confusing if you don't remember that. Well, like we said, fortunately, this came out immediately after the game did, and nobody had to wait literally years in which they might have forgotten the game's mechanics. Yep. That's very fortunate. This would have been uh, very awkward had they not done that. So, all told, pretty grateful. Honestly though, these aren't too bad, and they're constructed in a way that when you pick this area apart, kind of... I don't want to say makes it obvious, but they've done a good job, broadly, 
of kind of directing your curiosity into the places where you will rediscover things that are important. Yeah, neither of those chests look particularly offensive to try and figure out how to get. In the main area, they are going to make us work a bit, but that's because the main area is where the real prize is. But also, there's a kind of person who would purchase an epilogue DLC for CrossCode, and that person would just instinctively be scanning elevation for potential platforming routes all the time, passively. Anyway, here's why there's no point in shopping here. These are only the generic shops. They sell only the generic equipment. There's a, like six other stalls in this market. They got people in them, they got floating symbols on them, it's just nothing. Never goes anywhere, they never open. What the hell? Ah well. Fortunately, it's extremely unimportant. Also, Satoshi has a door on his roof that does not open. Now, you might think maybe it's just locked like a normal person's house would be, but no, there actually isn't anything. There's just... There's, there's nothing there. Entertainment, you're done fucked up. What kind of monster would put a door that just doesn't open? somewhere like that. I'm broadly reminded of the only other time entertainment have been shown to be putting a door to nowhere in their game. It's understandable if you've forgotten it was literally right at the very beginning in, like, the first screen of Rocky Harbor. There was a call-out for it in the game and everything. But yeah. What... what is with that door? I like how, like, the master bedroom that has, like, a whole fucking fireplace and an opening room and everything is considered his attic. Hmm. Also, it's the bit with the 14-seater couch. I think they just developed this tile set for the corner couches, like, you know, kind of like... Have you ever just gone on IKEA's website and just played with the the tools for building a sofa set up? I have to admit, I have not. I feel like uh, Entertainment probably do that a lot. Oh well. Here's our new weird lore uh, collectible. The captain's report comes in five segments, and unlike the uh, mysterious logs, these will always unlock an order, regardless of where you find them. And they are probably going to reveal something incredibly fascinating when we find them all. Probably. What's not fascinating is uh, the city hall in Homestead. There's, there's nothing in here. There's a bunch of rooms that contain nothing. There's people you don't talk to. There's the conference room, is you know, interesting as a set piece. I think the intention is that with the game content here doesn't really matter. It's more like, you know, this is going to be a settlement later. Also, all of our pets hang out here. It's just that the cool crowbar is the only one that we have right now, so uh, that kind of seems like a bit of a non sequitur the first time you check it out. Yeah, I honestly, I wasn't quite sure what that was at first, and I was like, um, you know, like, what? We don't have a mysterious non-functioning door on our roof, but like I said, we do have treasure, and that's how I know that the builders of this place get us. And this is why the game has been making sure you've been paying attention. This route is still going.
yeah, that's been there this whole time. Like I said, new home wastes no time. And what could possibly be worth all this trouble? Well... But is it a horrible goose? I... I don't understand. That's a redundant question. I'm a little disappointed that it does not make the sound. But uh, I think there might have been such a thing as uh, being too on point. So ultimately, uh, I feel like this is a sensible pragmatic concern. Also, here's our attic. We have a TV, and we can turn it on. More importantly, we can turn it off. I was going to say, but what if we didn't turn it on? Well, then there would be a lot less Eurobeat in our lives. Like, I, what, what, what did you think? So yeah, kind of notably, the only party members that we can recruit at this point are Emily and specifically Luke, and not Lucas. I don't know why everyone else is too busy for us, you know, apart from Apollo and Jern literally not being here. I can't believe that Apollo didn't want to be here to see his favorite cheater come back into the world. I know, right? He seems exactly the type to jet halfway back across the galaxy for the occasion. Man, it sure wouldn't do for us to know in advance what the news was going to be. I think we better hear her out though, she might literally explode again if she doesn't get to tell us. He's right, all those things are very weird. Right, yes. Surprise. You know, I, I've come to my time watching this game. I feel like surprises are a bad thing, broadly speaking. I admire Albert's ability to actually maintain a bit that's, like, actually kind of endearing. Anyway, yeah, Schneider just refuses to party with us for whatever reason. It's kind of weird. Fortunately, he literally has a clone available, so we can still roll around with the tribe later if we want. There's not really much to do at this point, although I guess you could go and pick up quests if you still have any of those. Actually, that's a good question. Where where are we collectively? Like, is this something separate, or is this just something that's been stapled onto the existing endgame? This, uh... It's stapled on. It's new plot chapters, but uh, existing side content remains present. So it, it extends 
the crossworlds that are already available. So this is functionally just Endgame, except now there's also more plot. Yeah. I still don't know what to make of Buggy. Here's a small thing that I missed. Up in the second floor of the guild headquarters, there's a bunch of stuff that you can examine. Mostly it's just books kicking around. I am deeply curious to know what a laser lasagna tastes like. I don't know. I see. I'm partial to the uh, the frobbit recipes myself because, like, are there really fifty different ways that you could make that? I mean, you underestimate culinary creativity. All right, fuck us up. Put on our best surprise face. What? The raid? Oh, oh no. Who, who could have seen this coming? Definitely not literally everybody. I can kind of understand their perspective on the matter, though. It was kind of a you know, pretty conspicuously unfinished deal. And there was that whole thing where we really wanted to all do it again, but then as far as everyone else could see, Leah just arbitrarily backed out for no reason. It would have looked kind of weird. But none of that matters, because we are putting this raid business behind us. Oh, Sergei, why, why would you say that? Why would you even open the door to that possibility? I would hope in the seven months that uh, Instatainment have fixed the exploit in their raid system. Like, you would hope that. That's a thing that seems like it would be rational to expect to be the case. Anyway, in a nod to what I assume is supposed to resemble the organic passing of time, people, like, all log off when it's supposed to be night, and uh, our task is literally just to go to bed. And once again, I am reminded that uh, this game is notionally set in a galactic future, and we're all keeping time on, like, hundreds of planets. And yet somehow everyone just all agrees on when's early and when's late. How could you even keep that straight among one planet, let alone several? Perhaps it's best not to think about time too much. Every now and then you really do have to make a pragmatic concession. There is kind of sort of a subtext going on in the epilogue about, like, man, what now? What do you do? 
I mean, to be fair, that that is a fair subtext. I mean, really, it's a fair question in general to tackle, considering that they are functionally just enhanced NPCs in a video game. A video game that does not and will not exist forever? Yeah. I mean, subtext is overstating it a bit. They, they, they drag it up. They put it right there. But yeah, that's what's going on. Just something for us to sleep on. Which uh, is also pretty weird when you think about it. <laughs>